Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Snowflake podcast on Snowflake Data Marketplace and FactSet and how we're working together. My name is Justin Langseth. I'm the Data Exchange CTO, and I'm joined today by Brian Lenker from FactSet. So welcome, Brian. Thanks, Justin. Definitely appreciate uh, being able to join you guys. Awesome. So uh, we're going to talk a bit today about the Snowflake Data Marketplace and then show some demos of the marketplace and of how FactSet is integrated with that and how Snowflake customers can access data from FactSet directly from Snowflake. So uh, the Snowflake uh, Data Marketplace is something we launched about a year ago and we have uh, lots of premium content available from partners of ours like FactSet and it allows our customers to immediately get access to this data and start to query it, analyze it with their own tools, machine learning tools, BI tools, what have you, join it to their own data, but without having to load the data, store the data themselves, or really do anything other than just uh, access it. So we're really excited to have some uh, really premium name brand content providers joining us on the Snowflake Data Marketplace, uh, especially FactSet. So uh, Brian, can you tell us a little bit about, about FactSet itself? Absolutely. Yeah. So I actually work with FactSet's channel partners and solutions exchange businesses. And I just want to put this out there. I think I speak on behalf of everyone here when I say that we're really excited about our partnership with Snowflake. And I think our clients are as well. Um, but for, for over 40 years, um, FactSet has really been working with the world's financial professionals, and they've been relying on us at pretty much every stage of their investment process. I mean, that could be idea generation, research, probably going all the way down to things like risk management, reporting, and portfolio analysis. Um, but what, we, what we've really aimed to do was to create a seamless user experience across that whole process. Um, but of course, our main goal is really to help our clients, you know, drive their productivity and performance. And, and to meet that need, FactSet offers quite a number of different flexible and open solutions covering software and data. Um, but today we're here mostly to talk about the data piece. Um, and FactSet is known for being able to combine our unique proprietary data sets um, along with in-house data um, and more recently third-party data on the open FactSet marketplace. Um, so we're, we're really doing this to help, help our clients see and seize opportunity sooner. And partnerships with firms like Snowflake, I think only help to accelerate the benefits to, to everyone involved. Cool. And when you talk about proprietary and alternative data, can you give some examples of what that might be and, and why customers might might use that? Yeah, definitely. Um, at least on the alternative data side, there's really been, you know, an explosion in, in how much data is available over the past few years. And that's from both, you know, I think financial professionals who are seeking it, but also from providers who are who are creating it. And I think there's there's some challenges on both sides. So from the, the financial professional perspective, you know, there's so much data out there. Which ones do they look at um, across which categories? Those are probably the, the big things that first come to mind. Um, but even once you've made the decision to look at a few, now you have to begin the, the arduous process of actually onboarding and integrating that content into your ecosystem, which can take a, a lot of time. From the provider perspective, I think you know, they could have the greatest data in the world, but if you haven't built up your reputation or really, you know, struck those right partnerships yet, it can be really hard for them to get the exposure to the right financial firms that they need. Plus, if their data, you know, it's not structured in the way that our clients would expect, um, you know, using standard symbologies like QCIP or CEDAW, ISO codes for countries and currencies, maybe having point in time data, all those things can make it really difficult, you know, to speed up their distribution of that data. And really for, for both sides, I think, you know, those arguments kind of show that it can be really expensive from both time and money to work with it. Um, but as far as proprietary data, um, you might have holdings for your portfolios. You might have custom factors that you've built. Um, there could be a whole slew of different types of content that, that our institutional um, firms are really creating on their side. And when you, when you mentioned symbology, like in database lingo, of course, if you want to join data sets together, you need to do a you know, join on statement. Can you, can you talk about how you're, what you guys do in terms of making that possible? And why is it, it not just possible to do that kind of in, in general? Why, why is that hard? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. I think it kind of hits on what's really core to FactSet's data offering. Um, so you have commercial symbologies like QCIP, CEDAW, Ticker, and ISIN. Um, you might have proprietary symbologies, um, like FactSet has their own, um, their own proprietary symbology. Um, but when you bring in different providers, um, of different content, they might organize their data in a different way. And a really good example of this is when an M&A action happens. Um, so if there's a merger between two companies, who is a survivor, um, what symbol is it listed under pre and post um, that M&A date, 
Mm -hmm. um, and so Faxit does a really good job at making sure that when we integrate new content, that it's essentially back test ready so that you can go from one database to another without having to do all of that symbology integration. So that piece is really what I think Faxit has been doing you know, for the 40 years that we've been a company, probably better than anybody else. And we make that data available um, as part of our as part of our data model. And so you'll see this in an example later, I'll show you a section where we have two different symbologies and we're essentially resolving them on behalf of our, of our clients. Great, and you're providing data. Are you also providing any kind of like data enrichment services or machine learning services where there would be like a bi-directional exchange of data with your customers at all? Or we do, so we have, a, we have a large analytics arm which does a lot in the, in the derivative workspace. Um, mm -hmm. So it could be things like portfolio attribution. Right. Um, it could be, you know, pricing related. Um, we have a, a whole suite of different analytics tools um, that, that can be available from FactSet as well. Great, yeah, like risk analysis, position risk in real time, yeah. Okay, that's exactly. a very, very interesting kind of use case. Um, do you want me to go ahead and kind of show our, our audience here kind of how this works, at least from the Snowflake mark -based perspective, and then maybe you can show us like some details on your, your data in particular? I think that's perfect. All right, let's do this. Let's see if I can share my uh, screen here. All right, so what you're looking at is the Snowflake data marketplace. It's a segment of uh, the Snowflake user interface. So when customers of Snowflake log into Snowflake, they can click and access the Snowflake data marketplace. And here you can see that we have a variety of categories of data uh, that's provided by uh, other customers of Snowflake. For example, FactSet is under our financial category. You can see FactSet here with their fundamentals data feed. We have other types of financial uh, data as well, um, but then other categories of data. We have um, uh, marketing data, we have cybersecurity data, we have healthcare data. For example, uh, there's daily updating data coming from Johns Hopkins and uh, New York Times on the COVID outbreak break that we're dealing with right now. Uh, it's uh, accessible directly from Snowflake, as well as lots of other types of data from lots of different providers. And all this data is provided not by Snowflake, but by customers and partners of ours like, like FactSet. So uh, to access any of these data sets, for example, if you wanted to access this, uh, the COVID-19 uh, outbreak data, you can come in and click on that tile, you can read more information about what's in this data set, can see example queries that you could run against this data. And then uh, in this case, this data is immediately available to just get access to. So you could press this view, uh, view database button and immediately be inside looking at the tables of data uh, that are underneath this shared data set. It's kind of the basic way. It's pretty simple to get uh, discover new types of data. You might want to join in with your existing data for a whole variety of use cases from the financial one that Brian's about to drill into, but also for really any anything uh, in these various categories. And uh, so that's kind of just the basic overview of the Snowflake data marketplace. Uh, Snowflake doesn't charge any extra to, to access this. It's available to our customers and they're able to explore and discover and access these data sources. Uh, some of these data sources are available just for free and immediately like that uh, COVID data I just showed. Others uh, like FactSet data are in the uh, kind of, we call it a personalized set of data. And what this means is that when I click on the FactSet tile, I can see some information about the data that FactSet has in Snowflake that they're ready to share with joint customers of FactSet and Snowflake. You can see some example uh, queries of that. And in this case, since it is a premium data set with a subscription that you'd enter into with FactSet, there's a button here called request. And if I want to request this, I can type in my, my company name and I can uh, basically just accept this terms and press the request button. And when I push that, it'll actually start the process to give me access to the specific data that I have licensed from FactSet. Or if I'm not yet a FactSet customer, it would lead to a process where I can start to explore and test out and become a customer or a trial customer of FactSet data. So that's the, uh, the basics of, of how it works once you've connected to the FactSet data. Um, you can analyze it and access it in a variety of ways. And Brian, do you want to uh, kind of pick it up from here and show us what you would do with, or uh, what you could do with the data once you, uh, once you hook up to it this way? Absolutely. So let me share my screen. Yeah, I will say that the um, data marketplace is just a fantastic way to enable our, our joint clients to quickly get access to our content as fast as possible. Um, and because the way that Snowflake is set up, and I think this is something that gets everybody excited, is FactSet can manage all that data load process once for all of our clients. And really, like 
it makes it super frictionless for our clients to get access to it. Um, and we can replicate to whatever cloud provider, um, whatever region of choice. And in the end, we're just making it available through, through Snowflake. So it's, it's an incredibly fantastic advantage for, for, for everybody involved. Um, but what I'm showing here, um, can you guys see my screen? Yep. Looks Perfect. Um, is um, our, our internal um, instance of, of um, our facts of data in Snowflake. And you can see we have a bunch of different content sets loaded right now. We have about 24 different content sets that are available today. Um, they're all, all, all fact set owned content sets. Um, we do have you know, another 50 or so content sets out on the open facts at marketplace that we will be integrating very shortly into this, like a, a couple weeks away. Um, and that covers a lot of different categories of data. It could be ESG, which is environmental governance and social data, consumer transactions, crowdsourced, IP data, patents, satellite, web data. There's a whole host of different categories. So we're really going to have a lot more on the marketplace than just fundamentals. So keep, keep an eye on the, on the marketplace. We're about to put a, a lot more content up there. Um, but for, for this example that I wanted to highlight here, um, I have three different screens just to, to run through very quickly. I'm not going to get too in depth here. Um, but um, as an example, um, one of the things I'm interested in is looking at, you know, the, let's say the S&P 500 and which companies are um, having upcoming reporting dates. And I'm also interested in seeing what the street is saying about those companies. Should they buy? Should, should we sell? Should we hold overweight, underweight, things like that? Um, so I'm pulling in data from three different data sets and they're all at different symbology levels. So for, to start, I'm going to pull in um, the membership for VOO, which is Vanguard's ETF for the S P 500. Um, and I can pull in all the current holdings for that. For when the second piece. In, sorry, Brian, when you say pull oh, yeah. in, what do you mean by pull, pull in? Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, so basically we have um, tables for what we call our ownership database um, and for this specific fund, we can go out and see that what the membership looks like for that fund all the way back since inception. Um, so I'm able to say like, here are the 500 companies that make up this fund as of the last quarter. So I'm going to pull that data back and basically do some additional work on it as my starting universe. Yep. And all that data is in Snowflake already. When you say pull, you mean basically pull it into your query so you can kind of exactly. Analyze. Yeah, it's already there. That's the, that's the beauty of it is, you know, our engineers at Facts that have already done this work to load the data, keep it updated on an hourly basis. So as an end user of this system, I get to just come in and query this data um, pretty much as fast as it becomes available, which is, which is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. The second piece for this is I'll take that current universe and then I'll go out and fetch all of the upcoming um, earnings report dates, and I'll grab just the next one that's coming in. So that way I get a good sense of, you know, are they reporting today or are they reporting in a few weeks? And then the third piece, and this is the one that I'll actually, I'll actually run in here, or I'll, I'll rerun it, um, we'll pull in the data from the estimates database. So we're starting with fund level information, pulling back the constituents at one symbology level, and then we're going out to estimates, which is at a different symbology level, um, and pulling in all all of this data together to basically show me who's reporting next and then what is the street saying. Is, um, this, so, where they could, um, is this where somebody could join to their own portfolio? Say if the, if the customer had their portfolio in their Snowflake account, uh, this, they could join to the data you're providing and, and, and would, they, would you see their, their data? Like how would, how would that work? Yeah, great question. So yeah, this is a very common use case. So they, that end user might not be interested in what the street is saying or they might wanna look at their own internal estimates or their own internal factors alongside this data. Um, and since they're doing this in their own Snowflake account, um, you know, they're, they're basically entitled to see what data FactSet provides, but FactSet can't see the other way. So we don't necessarily know um, what other data they're, they're commingling. They just get the advantage of using essentially a, a managed data service um, that, that you know, makes all, make sure all the data gets connected very easily. Got it, so they get the benefits of all, access to all your data, but without having to do the work to load it or to pay to, to store it. Uh, but then they can run any analysis they want against it and join it to their own data. Um, I guess even use like external BI tools like Tableau or Looker or what have you, or machine learning tools like HTO, H2O or Data IQ or something like that. Um, exactly. Without, without, uh, without doing any extra work to get your data as part of that puzzle. Huh? Exactly, which is huge. I mean, you know, running the starting point of this analysis, like it, it usually starts in SQL, but you know, as you guys know, it almost always ends up in, in another tool in another language. Maybe it's, you know, Python or a BI tool downstream or, or something, you know, pr another proprietary system. But this just makes it very easy to access all this third party content without you having to manage the data yourself. So I would agree with that exactly.
Yeah, so here we have the, the, the final result of, the, of this, this you know, pretty simple analysis is I have my, you know, my main fund membership in here. So all the constituents of this fund, I can see when they're reporting. So you can see we have a couple, a couple companies reporting today. Um, and then you can see how many analysts in here are essentially saying, should you buy, hold, or sell, um, overweight or underweight, and then the total number of contributing analysts here. Now, there are several white papers that will help you take this analysis further. So for example, I might not want these consensus numbers exactly like this. I might just want to use providers who have what I would call expert knowledge on these companies. So you could limit these down to get a, you know, a more preferred consensus view on your own side. Um, there's also supply chain implications in here as well. So I might care less about the companies that are reporting today and more about the companies that are reporting later on, pulling in their customers and suppliers and seeing if they're reporting before these guys, because they probably have some insight as to how that relationship is going, you know, before this main company reports. And those are both very well documented use cases. You'll find more information on those types of use cases through white papers listed on both, you know, Snowflake's uh, marketplace as well as Factsets marketplace. No, that's very cool. Thanks for showing us a little bit of a glimpse into your data and the data that our joint customers could get access to just through this uh, marketplace mechanism. Uh, Absolutely. That's great. I know, and we touched on some of the benefits to our joint customers as we were discussing it there. Uh, but really the fact that they can get access to this data without having to load it, store it, or pay for the storage or loading of it. And uh, that data, that earnings, like uh, analyst data, obviously you'd want that to be very fresh if you were going to make trading decisions on it. Like that is updated periodic frequently, right? That's right. Yeah, every hour. Every hour. Okay, great. Yeah. As the, as the world changes sometimes <laughs> at that speed, if not faster, uh, that's, it's, it's another big benefit if, versus having to pull from an FTP or even pull an API or uh, like how do, how do people otherwise get this data? Are they, are they doing those kinds of things? Like, yeah, it's all, it's all HTTP, FTP, SFTP. It's, it feels, it feels a little archaic versus um, you know, how we do it through Snowflake now. Yeah. Okay, great. Especially as, as the world's moving faster, the speed and the real time access, as soon as you update the data on your end, because Snowflake has separated out the, com the compute that's happening in the customer's account from the storage that's happening in your account, basically the customer's compute is pointing directly to the data that you've stored, right? So there's never any latency or gap between you updating your data and the customer being able to refresh the dashboard or update their model and immediately getting that new data. That's right, that's exactly right. Yeah, you're working on the, the true production copy of our data. Great. Um, well, it's been great uh, chatting with you about this today. We're really excited about the partnership as we uh, expand the, the deployment of Snowflake Data Marketplace. We're really driving all of our customers to start to use the data sets that are in there. And I know that's uh, already driven a whole bunch of interest in our, in our customers at Snowflake, uh, some of whom are existing FactSet customers and some of whom are interested in getting access to this type of data. And I've, I believe since uh, since uh, either become facts of customers too, or at least to express interest, right? You've seen, you've seen some net new activity from this. Exactly. Yeah. I think there's, there's been a lot of interest in just, you know, a lot of firms wanting to get quicker, more efficient, frictionless access to data. Um, mm -hmm. And Snowflake seems like the, the perfect conduit. So I would say if, if you're interested, you're either an existing facts at client or you're, you know, not a client yet or the same for Snowflake. Um, I'd really encourage you to reach out to your, your facts at or Snowflake rep. Um, we can obviously talk more about the integration and, you know, the technology and the data. Um, but yeah, I'd really encourage you, you know, to reach out to your rep and I, I really appreciate the time today, Justin. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, it's really, uh, really encouraging to see this beneficial uh, to, to FactSet and uh, to Snowflake, but most importantly to our, our joint existing and joint future customers. So it's been a great relationship so far as we've gotten this off the ground. And yeah, the next step, anyone who wants to try this out, like uh, Brian said, please contact your Snowflake rep or your FactSet rep and we uh, will get it going. So uh, thanks so much.